How are you? Sorry, I am not, I am not my head to today because uh, yesterday I worked. Yes, it was my first working day, my first time in which I could have my job and uh, as a private private dinner here in Tuscany near Lucca. So I'm very happy for this because finally I work. But I have not my health because it is in the washing machine at the moment. And uh, so I greet you and I say you buongiorno, buonasera, and this evening we are going to make focaccia pugliese with all the respect that this uh, um, delicious dish needs. And uh, you can see the ingredients that are fantastic. Here we have some smashed potatoes and some cherry tomatoes that here in Italy are called ciliegini and datterini. And here we have some olives and some capers. There is the salt, coarse salt. Then you have some rosemary, and here there is the fantastic oregano that in this case is dried, but you can use also a fresh oregano, like that one that I have at my home. This was a present of a friend of mine from Sicily, and there the oregano is fantastic. So let me see you, let me see if you are here with me, so we can start to make a focaccia pugliese that is amazing, following the recipe from my granny first, but also from the Academy of Chef Dan. That is a very simple, but you have to respect some steps. So, Hilda Garabed ti saluta. Ciao Hilda! E anche Silvia, baci galupi. Grande Silvia, thank you, thank you e, for following guys. Judy Stockton ti scrive, ciao Erika, sono Judy Samson da Fort Worth, nel Texas. Che bello! E, Texas. Buongiorno! Ciao Judy, I love Texas and I have many friends in Texas. Rachel is from Texas and have many friends that usually I have here. Uh, comes from Texas that I think is a beautiful place. I'm sure of this. Um, maybe uh, tell me if you can see, if you can watch, if I if I need uh, to um, switch on the lamp. Maybe I try. Maybe maybe now it's better. I think because it was uh, a bit dark. Il dagarbe de dal Lebanon hugs. Cheryl Roventini ti dice ciao dal Nevada. Grazie. E Judy Stockton ti dice che è la mamma di Rachel. Oh, ciao Judy! Finally I see you and meet you online. Oh, I'm very happy for this. I, I am very happy also if you tell me where you come from because so I know where people can watch this broadcast, this live broadcast and, and so I'm very happy if you let me see you. And I know that you are here. If you want to make questions, you can. Ginevra after tell me and I answer as I can. Promise it. So guys, let's go. Let's start with this. The focaccia pugliese is very famous for one particular characteristic that is very, very soft. You can make it with meat. So at the same time, and just the first step is to use the smashed potatoes. You can use... I boiled the potatoes, then I smashed it with a, um, a tool for smashing potatoes. In this case, that we use 500 grams of flour. Mm, I use grams, but you have the recipe with the American or USA measure than with, the, with your ingredients in the, I wrote this on the recipe. In this case, um, we use the farina, the flour type O, that is that one for pizza or bread here in Italy. I think it, it, is, uh, it corresponds to your all purpose, but with no yeast inside all purpose flour. So, we, we, in this case, we use one potato, so it's not important the quantity. This is the dimension, the size that I want you to see. This is okay for 500 grams of flour. So, we go. With the potatoes, we go immediately with the flour. It's not important that you sieve it 
no problem to save it. Judy ti chiede se farai mai un dessert con i cannoli. Ok, well, we can make. Judy, we can make cannoli. So I, I teach you the, the dough, the cannoli dough, that once you learn this, you make always cannoli, of course. So guys, now we have potatoes and flour. At this point, we need to put something that has rising. The first thing that has rising, you know, is the yeast that here in Italy we use dry yeast directly from the beer. So the name is beer yeast. And I can show you the shape. It's this one. It's very, very small. In this case, we use two of this kind of teaspoon that I put a bit more that I put with some water. You know the water that I put in the ingredients. I use just a bit of the water of the ingredients to dissolve just a bit the dried is dried beer is. I want to tell you that uh, you know that focaccia pugnese need to rise. So since maybe I can make, I can take a picture after, but we have to make it rise. I want to show you one time that is already risen. This is the focaccia pugnese after the levitation, after the yeast rise. So at this point, you can see everything is fluffy. If you put a finger, it goes down. It's very soft. I think you can understand this. So we put this focaccia in the oven. So maybe after we can see when it's ready. Everything broadcast live. Huh? Carlo ti chiede acqua fredda. Uh, here, Carlo, thank you for your question. Warm water. If you use warm water, the levitation, the rise, it will be very, very uh, faster. Anyway, you can also use fresh water, but usually in focaccia pugliese we use warm water. So with the salt of the this, and we are going to put this Look at here, this is a small trick to put all the ingredients together. We make like a hole, like a well here. And we start with the yeast that is already dissolved there. If you, if you want, you, you can watch Ginevra. Tell me what's the, the right position. At this point, we go with some honey, you know. Look at me so you understand. I put just one teaspoon. The honey, if it's from the flowers, in this case is uh, from many kinds different of flowers, really help rising. Then we are going to use the extra virgin oil. Look at me how much oil I put. And remember in focaccia, a lot of oil now and then so you can count five seconds of oil one two three four five and stop if you if you don't want measure Tom amico dice che lui ha usato l'acqua della bottiglia perché non ha il cloro perfetto Tom you can use the water without cloro that is very good and uh, is also appropriate to rising, perfect. E poi Judy McBride ti saluta dal Maryland. Sì, grande Judy. Ciao, ciao, ciao. I use one spoon, one tablespoon, because so I avoid to make a mess. It's impossible to use a board, a wooden board now. Just we'll use a spoon. This is what I suggest you, even if you have your hand very clean. After you can use your hand, but not now. And we go to use our water. Usually I put in the ingredients a quantity of water that is much more than, that, not much, but 
a bit more that what you need because so I'm sure that with your fingers that will be very dirty of flour you have not to go to the tap and, and take again some water. Donna Keller ti saluta da Boston. Ciao Donna, thank you, da Boston. Bello. How is Boston now? It's hot or it's cold? <laughs> I know Boston is a cold town if, if I if I am not wrong. But not now I think. <laughs> Fiorella Sprea, cari saluti e buon lavoro. Grazie mille Fiorella. Thank you. <laughs> Happy that you are here with you with us. Grazie. So guys, look at me. We make some hole here. Donna we... Keller dice che fa caldo. Ah, caldo Boston. Okay, grazie Donna. Now I know it's so nice to know the 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 various uh, uh, kinds of places and different weather and also the thinking way of people. Tom amico ti chiede dove sei locata. Um, Tom, I am in Lucca. Lucca is in Tuscany, in the north part of Tuscany, is uh, near Pisa, the, seat, the town of the Leaning Tower. So Pisa and Lucca are eight uh, miles of distance. And we are in the countryside of Lucca. Thank you, Tom, for following, and thank you for watching. So we just had a bit more of water. And at this point, we can go directly. Rachel ti saluta e ti chiede se oggi in Toscana è caldo e ti chiede se the heat, che non so cosa sia, uh, affect how the focaccia will turn out. Um, yes, the um, you the heat. Come uh, l'ha scritto? H e a t. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, the um, is important that you put your focaccia in the oven when it is very very hot, like the same temperature of pizza. I don't know if I am understanding well what you are. Asking. Anyway, remember that if it's warm, like now, here is very cold, it's very hot, not warm. I think there are uh, 30 degrees now at this time because it's uh, 5 uh, o'clock in the morning, in the afternoon. And uh, so I, uh, I think that the, uh, if you have very hot weather, it affects. After I go to to watch the, the question and I try to understand if, uh, if maybe it's not so precise my answer, eh? Here. Yeah. Judy Stockton dice che a Fort Worth in Texas ci sono 95 degrees. Ah, Fahrenheit. Ma sembra che ce ne siano 103 e chiede uh, come è adesso il tempo dove stai. Here is very, very hot and... Uh, 95 degree Fahrenheit, I don't know at what they correspond, but here we measure our weather in, centi in Celsius, Celsius degree. Carlo dice che gli piace come mescoli la farina con una mano sola. <laughs> uh, Carlo, if you know, when you go with one hand, you, you have always to turn, because if you turn, everything is better, and uh, what they... Uh, taught me is always one hand clean and the other work. So when you have a bowl, always with one hand, so the other is, uh, is clean. Now I wash my hands. Odil Volpoet dice io ci sono. Mm, bene. Thank you, Didi. E Rachel Stockton dice che stava chiedendo se il tempo caldo fuori eh, influisce sulla focaccia. Yes, the, the weather really influences the focaccia, but in a, in a better way. Let's go, get, girls. E Judy poi dice, uh, misuri fuori sempre heat, heat uh, con il Celsius. Sì. Ah, heat e calore. Show you, this is the oil 
Now, in this case, I suggest you to use a round baking tray larger. So, 36 centimeters, I think they are 14 inches. Uh, maybe Carlo, you can help me, but I think 14 inches. And so we have some extra virgin oil here, and we make this movement. Remember, focaccia need much oil. Now I take my hand. This is a beauty treatment for your hands. We take our bowl and we go with our fingers. Better with the tip of our fingers. You know that focaccia has always this small um, shape like uh, uh, cavities, like something that is uh, uh, put it down. Mm? So you use your fingers and you go, no problem. At this point, you take the oil again, you spread with your finger again and this is very important you take this and you go this to the other side remember i suggest you to use a larger ba round baking tray but always you go to make this movement with your fingers so you see you can have this place this is very important, is the characteristic shape of focaccia because after you have to put here salt and all the, the condiments and the seasoning. Tom amico dice che l'umidità a Rochester a New York uccide, yeah. specialmente l'impasto della pizza per i forni a legna. Sì, sí. yes, for the wood fired oven is terrible, it's really terrible, yes. Poi... Lindy Vestal sì? chiede quale temperatura dovrebbe avere il suo forno. Always the maximum. Any kind of oven you have, always the maximum. Now we go with the part that is the longer. Guys, ok? Let's go. We take our tomatoes first. Datterini. This is, is the characteristic shape of, oops, of the focaccia pugliese. We take the tomatoes. Maria Furnari chiede quanto tempo? Nel forno 20-25 minuti, al massimo. Thank you, Maria. So guys, I, I, I show you, we put the cherry tomatoes or datterini or piccadilly tomatoes in this way, so one, one north, south, east, west. Then we go again, cut in half, and you go inside, inside, inside. So you are sure to make always the same distance. Huh? Then we can go here too, here, here. Is a, a draw that you can always make different. It's just important in the focaccia pugliese, if you want to see a good shape, to have something a bit um, symmetric. Hmm? So this is a, a real fun part of our job, I think. Okay. When you put, you press a bit, like this, and it will be the juice that is inside the tomatoes that will make soft, soft and fluffy your focaccia. Let's go with the olives. I have brown olives from Tuscany. I don't know what kind of olives have you in your country, but I'm sure that you can use any kind you like. I just suggest you to take um, olives that um, are flavored with uh, or hot pepper uh, or salt so that, uh, that they are uh, salty. Judy Stockton chiede quanto tempo significa 400 degrees? Um, Forse voleva di temperatura. Sì, 
uh, uh, I think that 400 Fahrenheit, because in the in the oven, I think that I remember, is uh, the maximum. For example, here in Italy, here in Italy, when you have 180 degrees, the Fahrenheit is 350. So um, 400 Fahrenheit is. Uh, 250 I think around anyway is the maximum that you can have uh, in Italy I think after I can check but I, I am pretty sure uh, Lindy Vestal uh, dice che il posizionamento dei pomodori sta aiutando il suo disturbo ossessivo compulsivo <laughs> Lindy yes I tell you the truth I was afraid that someone could, could tell me this it has not been helping you. <laughs> it's the it's the white birds. But this is very nice when you when you have a watch to the to do your focaccia. Take your capers, girls and, and guys and take two at a time, like this. Fiorella Sprea dice la tua focaccia sembra un fiore. Uh, yes, Brava it, Erika. Thank you. It looks like the fl a flower, sembra un fiore, vero? Eh, Donna Keller chiede che tipo di olive. Um, I am using the, the olive from Tuscany, and so they are local. Anyway, you can use also um, that one from Greek, because a friend of mine used that, and they were very good on the focaccia. So we have olives, tomatoes, capers, I use capers in sauce, as I showed you, but I forgot to tell you that you have to rinse very well under the water. Then, when they are rinsed, you take a kitchen paper and you can use, because they are very, very salty otherwise. Now we go with this part. This is the dried oregano that I love. I just take this to show you. Women in Sicily, sells the oregano in this bag and uh, take pick up this from the field in this case if you have oregano and you like oregano you can put with no problem okay i hope you like this i think that now we can put also a kind of tomatoes for the obsessive disturb this is better yes okay Pina Macri in risposta al commento di Judy che chiedeva quanto tempo significano 400 degree dice no, significa per quanto tempo. Ah, per quanto tempo in forno? Ok, um, how much time in the oven is 20-25 minutes and it's ok, 20-25 minutes is perfect. Ok guys, so I show you this, now we are going to use some rosemary that is very nice and that it can't miss from the uh, focaccia pugliese. Lindy Vessel dice bellissimo posizionamento dei pomodori. <laughs> Grazie Lindy, I know you are joking, eh? you are kidding. <laughs> I'm helping you. Ok, qui perfetto anche. And now the last touch is taking first of all some salt. So we go, we take our salt because focaccia needs salt before and after if you can taste. But remember that there are capers and olives, so usually it doesn't need. Pina Macri ti saluta da Toronto. Ciao Pina, I'm happy to meet you. I, I don't know if you saw you last time. I'm very happy that you are here with us. Allora. A Zeni Carlo scrive talamaca olive, olive talamaca. Sì, sì, bravo, bravo Carlo, sì, puoi usare benissimo queste. Sh uh, look at me how I, I can put this here. So we put also over, mm? 
And now this we can put in the oven. Not in the oven, pardon. We can put in the, in the oven, but we uh, switch it off everything, the heat and switch it, switch it off everything you have to put to rise about three, four hours. Jacques Balzan ti dice saluti da Malta. Ciao da Malta, it's the first time that someone uh, is from Malta, yes, uh, Ginny? I, I didn't mm. remember. Um, take this, uh, take a watch to this so they can see if you want to come here, then I, I will uh, show you the focaccia. If you want to come here, Ginny, to show them, to show better the focaccia. So we, we wait this, uh, Three hours, four hours, and uh, it has to rise uh, as I show you, uh, showed you before, if you remember, guys. Eh? Josie or Josie Phillips dice ciao fra, da Josie e Chad dagli Stati Uniti in California. Bello show, brava. Grazie Josie, sei gentilissima, gentilissima, very kind. E tuo amico scrive, mia nonna vorrebbe usare le acciughe al posto delle olive e mi stai facendo avere fame e penso di poter sentire l'odore della cucina di mia nonna. <laughs> puoi, uh, puoi usare, you can use anchovies, of course, no problem. And you can use everything you like more, no problem. And now there is a very good smell, I ragione, thank you. Yes, this is a really appreciate this thought. I want to show you a, a, a small trick that my granny taught me. You take a, a, a knife and you go in this way. Just like I showed you before, remember, Now I am, I am a bit uh, destroying <laughs> the perfection of the... But this is a trick that if you have a party or if you have some children and they want to be faster to take the slice, help very much. So you left it to rise, you wait these hours Three, four hours minimum, I think three, four, maximum five. It depends from where you live and from the heat and from the hot. Then when you see that is very, uh, I think two times the volume, you can put in your oven. This is a, a strange thing because usually, if you think, usually we wait um, that the dough will be rising. Uh, and uh, without seasoning. In this case, we season before. And because if you season before, you are sure it will be very, very soft. Eccoci qua. Da da! Allora gliela metto qua. Here is our focaccia that now is very very hot. So mm. you can see we have before and after. This is smaller, as I told you. This is bigger, so you can use a, a bigger tray, but, it, but it's okay, no problem. It depends from how you like more. If I found something, even if it's very hot, we can try to... Judy Stockton uh, ti chiede se la focaccia pugliese deve essere servita insieme a un pasto, tipo avere il pane con un pasto, o è un aperitivo prima di un pasto, o è un, un mm -hmm. piatto vero e proprio? Tipo uno snack. The focaccia pugliese you can always eat uh, like a, a dish, so you go to the seaside and you bring your focaccia with you, and uh, at lunch you eat that one, because you can also put over 
prosciutto, you can, you can put over uh, sausage and many things that uh, have nutritional factors and are very good and, and, and so nutritive and you can use uh, as a main dish, as a main curd. But anyway, in Italy we often use uh, when we have a party or when we go to have a, a trip with some friends and so we are sure because it's very um, Nutri I don't know the, the word in English anyway, uh, there are many uh, good substances inside and so when you eat this you are ok, you don't want pasta or an anchors after. Carlo ti chiede come si fa a mangiare un'opera d'arte. <laughs> Carlo, Carlo is a gentleman, thank you. <laughs> very kind always Carlo. I don't know if I can take off this because it's very hot, even if I use it. Mm. I am afraid that it will be destroyed. We have to, to wait. Maybe after I can, um, when I can take off this from the tray that is not so hot but it's warm, I can cut and I publish and I post the, the picture uh, so you can understand how is the high and how is the um, very soft inside. Usually this is the, the, the size of the focaccia pugliese, once it's very <laughs> risen. Gloria si dice che no, non può aspettare a farla e che sembra fantastica. Gloria, sono contenta di vederti, I'm happy to see you, how are you? Yes, this is fantastic, you have to try, it's very simple, and potatoes give to the uh, texture a really, really soft uh, um, texture that is very good. You can use the more olives, more capers, anchovies, what do you prefer. Uh, I just uh, made this uh, to have fun with you and to show you that sometimes when you put your tomatoes here and you press, you can see there are holes. You see? This is why because we, uh, we, we pressed our tomatoes and uh, this is the characteristic shape of focaccia pugliese. Donna Keller dice bellissimo. Grazie Donna, sei gentilissima. Thank Ca you. Carlo dice che può riuscire a sentire l'odore. Yeah, uh, the, the flavor and the smell is fantastic. Um, first of all, that one from oregano. There is a, a very good uh, smell of oregano in there. Rachel dice che sembra molto buono, un altro masterpiece e non può aspettare di farlo oggi. Grazie Rachel, grazie mille. And uh, you have to show me, eh? you, are, you have to put and uh, publish your pictures and after I, I post on our group Dolce Vita in Tuscany or in, on our page, uh, I'll be happy in our page Cooking Classes in Tuscany and uh, so we can uh, share together all the posts and all the recipe. Now it's really, really too hot and I, I can't uh, take off from my, from my chair. I have to wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes and then I take a picture just right here and I um, post to show you, of course. <laughs> So guys, I'm happy that we'll be together and that we have uh, another uh, live on screen class together tonight. And uh, I hope to meet you again. I don't know if we'll have uh, another cooking class on Thursday because maybe I have to work again. So if I'll be at work, uh, I can do the streaming anyway. We can keep in touch and you can be updated through the Facebook page Cooking Classes in Tuscany, Cuoca in Vacanza. And uh, I'm very happy to have been with you. Um, hope to see you uh, very soon and uh, wish you a very, very good weekend. Ciao, ciao, ciao a tutti.